Look at that. It's footage from Wednesday of the hurricane hunters, the flight crew, battling intense turbulence. They were collecting data from within Hurricane Melissa as it roared over the Caribbean Sea. A post on X from Dr. Andy Hazelton noted that one instrument, a drop zone from the hurricane hunters out over the open ocean, recorded a near record wind gust, 252 miles per hour. That was immediately before landfall. Uh, we know that it, it devastated western parts of Jamaica, making landfall at peak intensity. There he is. Joining us now is Dr. Andy Hazelton himself, associate scientist uh, from the University of Miami. He rode with the Hurricane Hunters for no less than five flights. So, Andy, uh, thanks for the incredible work. It's great to have you back with us on Fox Weather. You've been on a thousand of these flights. Most days, it, it's all in a day's work for you. But some of these flights were, were different. What was the overall experience like? Yeah, it was definitely one of the most um, intense set of flights I've been on. Probably the bumpiest, the one on Monday and then Tuesday, probably two of the bumpiest, if not the bumpiest flights I've been on. You know, and I've been in storms like Ian and Michael and um, Helene last year. And yeah, this was definitely another level, especially on Tuesday. Uh, right before landfall, when we were seeing those those wind gusts and the sounds up to you know to over 200 miles an hour and some flight level winds that were getting up to that level, pressure below 900, those are things that put you in a very rare, um, very rare category, very rare state in the Atlantic. And so, you know, definitely just feeling bad for the people of Jamaica and hoping that there's a quick recovery. Yeah, yeah, no question. And Andy, uh, you have a seat on that airplane for a reason. Uh, even with as historically intense as Melissa became, it wasn't necessarily unexpected. You, you had put out a post, uh, this was before the disturbance had even uh, entered the Caribbean, noting that possibility, all-time intensity, and you were right. Uh, was there anything about this storm that actually surprised you? There's the post right there saying, hey, I don't think it's hyperbolic to say we'll likely get a Cat 5, maybe one of the strongest storms on record. We'll see at the end of the day where this is. Uh, but but you kind of expected this. Yeah, I think a lot of it was expected given how warm and deep the water deep the warm water is. So that allowed it to keep just keep feeding itself even as it slowed down. No upwelling of cold water. I think the one part that was a little bit surprising is that the eye wall just stayed so intact the whole time. Sometimes these strong storms will do what's called an eye wall replacement cycle, where you get these fluctuations as a larger eye develops and sort of shrinks and cuts off the old one. This storm never really did that. It kind of just kept the same structure basically and, and just kept winding up all the way to landfall. And so there's a lot, that's going to be a lot of work that's going to be done research with models and observations that we collected to see, you know, why it did that. And, but certainly the environment was, was very high end and we, we knew this was a possibility if everything else lined up. Yeah. It looked on satellite as, as absolutely textbook as possible. What you were just talking about, do you think that there's any correlation with this being a, an annular hurricane? A satellite presentation, we were talking about it on Fox Weather, it looked like a, like a DVD, basically just a, a big inner core, the whole thing of intense wind. Yeah, there were some bands, but they were kind of all um, on the sort of the down shear, basically the, the east side. And so you never really got this, this outer ring of, of that, we, that we get when we get an eye replacement cycle. It was just sort of this, this constant core of, you know, that just became better and better and more symmetric over time and unfortunately, you know, peaked right as it got to land. And so, you know, some of our models were suggesting this was a possibility that it would never really do an eye wall cycle. And so, you know, since it's on the research side, that's what we do is we try to go back and understand exactly what happened. And I'm sure this is one that we're going to be digging into. And, and you know, the Hurricane Center will be digging into as well to see just how strong it was at peak because there were some very high-end observations from some of our instruments. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that, and I know it's super early for this question, but uh, we had referenced that post. You had mentioned the fastest wind gust on record uh, measured by a drop zone, and that was right before this storm was moving ashore. Uh, what were your thoughts? Uh, do you think this has a possibility of getting upgraded in post-analysis? It wouldn't surprise me. You know, I think it was um, 160 knots or 155, maybe 160 at, um, operationally. And it was even noted in one of the NHC discussions that the actual intensity will be something that they want to look at in peak because, you know, in practice, it doesn't really matter. You know, once 160 knots or 170, just very destructive and just horrible for Jamaica. But, you know, certainly there's some scientific interest in that and, and where it ranks, you know, not just for the Atlantic, but worldwide for landfalling hurricanes. And so that'll be something we go back and NHC will go back and look at these drop signs, the flight level data, the radar, 
um, you know, any other ground observations that we get and just and at the postseason and just see exactly where this storm ranks um, in terms of historical landfall intensities. Yeah, Andy, uh, great work. Obviously, that was a uh, rare context and, and the overall look that you gave us inside the storm. A, a, a lot of hard work over the last uh, several days. Uh, appreciate you uh, taking the time to, to talk to us about it. That's Dr. Andy Hazelton. Thank you. Thank you.